Hi guys, so I hope I am in focus. Let's hope. Ah! Gosh, I, brought, I burned myself with the tea. All right. So hi guys, it has been, it has been, sorry, a bit of a while. Um, first of all, see that? That's the face of someone really tired. My hair is doing whatever it wants to do. I haven't really been styling it or doing anything, really. Um, I have missed, really I have missed making videos for you guys. Just sitting down and chatting and talking to you in English. I really missed that. Um, well, to be completely honest with you, I haven't been filming very much, even in French. Most of the videos that you've seen being uploaded were pre-filmed. Um, and there were a few things that happened in France that I really wanted to react to and I couldn't really just find the time to make videos about that either um, because I'm, I mean, it's just so boring for me to say and so, yeah, so, yeah, it's just so boring for me to say so I can't even imagine how boring it must be for you to hear the same thing over and over again, but I've been really busy, um, really busy and really tired actually. Um, so every morning I go to work, obviously, um, and teaching is very, I mean, it's obviously in many ways a privileged work in the sense that I don't use my body very much. It's not dangerous for my health, it's not dangerous in the sense of, you know, I'm not in contact with people that could hurt me or whatever. Um, it's also very stimulating and um, just exciting and interesting job if that's something you want to do. So I am so happy to be a teacher and I just really value teaching and I understand that for most people it's probably not one job you think of when you think of difficult jobs. But And especially in my situation because I'm teaching to adults which, I mean, which is so easy and um, they're very nice and stuff so it's not like I have to be into discipline or anything like that but it's still very exhausting because you are the center of attention of a whole class and you have to talk and exchange with people and you have to keep the class alive um, and it's very exhausting actually it is really exhausting and you're also very much all the time standing up and it hurts in the back I mean it's it, it is not as easy as probably a lot of people think and on top of that having social anxiety myself and being an introvert it drains all of my energy and so just to give you an idea yesterday I slept three hours in the afternoon because I was so so tired really so every morning I go to work and then I go back home I come back home I should be going to university in order to prepare for my oral examinations that are very important but I I have so I mean I have so many things to do and so many things to read already and I'm so tired that I don't really think it's actually gonna help me to go to uni. I went there twice. Um it was nice, it was interesting, but it wasn't like I didn't feel like it was really necessary for me, but mind the um I don't know, I might be judging the situation not really accurately, who knows, we'll see. Uh, so I come back home, I prepare for work again and then I have to read the same books that I've been reading and rereading since last summer for my exam, my competitive exam. And at this point it's getting really just so, so annoying and frustrating and not interesting and I feel like I'm going in circles because um, you know when it's like the sixth time you've read a book and when you have read um, articles and analysis of the book and when you've had a few classes on the books at some point even though I like to believe that books are such an infinite universe and that you could reread them and I do believe that for some books you know definitely for example if we're to the I mean all books I'm, I suppose in a way but um, in the situation of a competitive exam when you have a deadline, when you have some goals and some, um, I would say, some ex like they expect, thing th they expect things from you, sorry, it's not like you're on a PhD situation and you're 
trying to get you know research done and you have time and you can be really personal and really smart about the analysis a competitive exam is really different in my opinion so you know you can't really be like this is an infinite universe and I'm gonna reread you and reread you again and again and I'm gonna find so many things interesting no you have to be practical about it so at some point it's like okay I am done like what do you want me to do more but at the same time because I know that I should be studying and I know that everyone else is fucking studying like crazy like when I went to uni the girls I talked to briefly they were so into it and I was like oh my god there is definitely such a gap in the way I do things and the way most of people do things um, and quite frankly before the competitive exam it was so stressful for me because I knew that a lot of them were not working, they were full-time students, they were going to university all the time to study, they were uh, like they were preparing for the exams which means they did fake exams, I never did one and I felt like completely out of place, I felt like I was not about like in a Ah, I felt like, yeah, I felt like it wasn't a place for me. I felt like I didn't belong there and my self-confidence went just like whew, completely. Um, but after the, and you know what, the written parts, between the written parts and the results of that written part, you have about a month, I would say, or something like this. Everyone was studying in this month preparing for the possible oral examination. I did not study even because I felt like I would never pass the written part because I just didn't believe in myself seeing what everyone else had been studying and had been re researching and everything and preparing and practicing and training for. Um, and the fact that I got through the written part, um, it kind of made me realize that, you know, we're all very different. And sometimes, obviously, even though you don't want to compare yourself, but you're like, it, it's really hard to not feel like you're doing things the wrong way when it seems like everyone else is doing it in another way. And another thing for me is that I have always, always um, just worked really fast, which means that I usually finish my exams even at uni like almost the first one, very frequently actually, the first one in the class. And you could think, wow, that's really great. And in a way, yes, it is really great. I read quite fast, I write quite fast, and I can organize like an essay very fast and quickly. That's, in a way, it is really positive, but it's also really, it has some downsides to it. Because, for example, I'd never reread what I had, what I did, like, when I write the paper and it's done, it's done. Like, I don't reread it because I know I won't be able to retouch it if I think, oh, that's not really good. And I don't want to have doubts and things like that. So I just hand it over and that's it. Um, so first of all, this is not really good. Something you should not do and something I advise all of my students not to do. I always tell them, keep five minutes to read yourself again over. But no, I don't do it myself. <laughs> Um, also, I go sometimes too fast and sometimes I forget things um, and obviously if I could keep, you know, um, if I could take like a bit more time to organize my thoughts and perhaps gather them, it could possibly be better. And also when you finish and no one else has finished around you, you almost feel like, did I misunderstand the subject, did I misunderstand what I was supposed to do? You always feel like you failed because, I mean, everyone else is still writing and, you know, <laughs> doing things. So yeah, um, those competitive exams were really, like, difficult for me in that sense. I felt so like I have failed, I had no hope whatsoever. But seeing that, you know, I passed through, seeing that apparently it's, you know, I have my own way of doing things and many people have their own ways of doing things so I try not to worry too much about the fact that when I went to uni everyone was so into it so hyper and so rereading all those different things that I am not rereading um, but yeah I am not studying too hard in the sense that I am not studying like I was studying when I first started studying for the competitive exam but at the same time, I don't want and don't feel like I can allow myself to do anything else. Like, I have books I want to read, I want to refilm the video in English, 
the Nawal Al Sadawi video, I want to keep um, um, I want to pick my blog up and I want to start over the book club again but I just feel like I don't have the right to do all those things because the competitive exam is not over yet and so that's already something that's very stressful in itself but obviously what's even more stressful is just having your mind always occupied and onto something I'm sure many of you can relate to that when you're multitasking, when you have like kids to take care of, when you have money issues, which I do, when you have to find a new place, which I do, when you are waiting for basically your life to change and to take so many different turns depending on the results of a competitive exam, for example, or when you have applied for a job um, somewhere and you're just waiting for the result. It is so stressful and draining because mentally you're always projecting yourself and you know, in all of those possibilities that are positive and negative and then when you're in the positive you're trying to just calm yourself down and be like don't even think about that because you could be failing so you're going back to the negative it's just like my mind is never at peace and it's so exhausting and I don't believe I mean I don't think that a lot of people actually I mean not really but like a lot of people that I talk to I don't think they really understand and realize how exhausting it is psychologically but then obviously it transfers in into physical um you know tiredness so it, it is really exhausting and then obviously so much pressure because if i fail at the roles i'm not gonna be a teacher i mean i'm gonna keep being a teacher as i am now but i am currently a french teacher for foreigners who want to learn french and i like my job i think it's really nice but I want to be a literature teacher and the job that I have now it doesn't pay well at all at all I just to give you an idea I am a teacher I am working 27 hours a week which is a lot for a teacher I mean okay um, and I have two master degrees and I earn about 1000 euros a month and I live in Paris so clearly it is not I mean, it doesn't pay for anything. I mean, it pays for the rent. And then, good luck to buy food, pay for the bills, um, and just leave. So, if I didn't have YouTube, actually, and if I didn't have you guys being so generous and so kind on Patreon, I don't know how I would do. I really don't know how I would do. Um, so that's why I always always mention Pat Patreon as well, it's because quite frankly, if I didn't have you guys supporting me on Patreon, I think I would have to stop making videos, to stop creating content online, to find another job. And obviously I wouldn't have the time and I wouldn't have the energy with two jobs to also create content online. Um, so yeah, it's a lot of stress, it's a lot of pressure. If I don't succeed, if I fail at the two competitive exams, I don't even want to think about it too much because I'm going to be left with nothing and um, I don't know if I'm going to have the strength to go through this kind of year again. And not only that, but it's also just a dream of mine to do a PhD. It's a dream of mine to study and research literature and share it with people and students. But not only students, I really want to make it something that I can share online and for that I obviously need more time and I need more money and so getting, I mean passing those exams and becoming a teacher um, would allow me to do that because I would earn more money, I would have the stability and the safety of employment and I would also have more time to just relax and just focus on things I like to do like writing um, and making content for you guys and I could make so much more of my content in the two languages um, because just you know subtitles they take so long and filming the same video twice it's also time consuming um, actually you know what I wasn't even planning on talking about this I was planning on making a video about the pressure of being a feminist and how people expect things from you when you say you're a feminist but I guess this is gonna be another video so I'm gonna stop rambling now I think this is just gonna be a raw emotion sort of things an update on my life um, just to explain to you a little bit why I'm not really posting and why I might sound really negative whenever I post 
I'm sorry about that. I know it's not really entertaining nor interesting for you guys. But I hope you understand. It has honestly been the roughest and the most difficult year of my life after the year my parents broke up. Um, and yeah, so I hope you understand. I hope you're doing very well and I'm gonna stop talking now and rambling now. Uh, if you miss me <laughs> and if you want to see um, things from me as I don't post very much on YouTube, feel free to follow me on Instagram. I post a lot more and I see what you comment and I'll read your messages and follow me on Insta Instagram and Twitter if you want and of course on Patreon if you feel like you want to help me keep on making videos with one dollar a month and yeah. <laughs>